our sons! For our daughters! For Sparta! The RPG-style Assassin's Creed games have received a lot of criticism over the years, especially from fans of the original series. As an AC fan and huge mythology nerd who has devoured all the Percy Jackson books, one game in particular has captivated me, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry, and we'll be talking about what this game did right as an AC game, why it was disliked, and what future Assassin's Creed games can adopt from this. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! This is Sparta! Assassin's Creed Odyssey sold over 10 million copies despite the divided fan reception. It's not a traditional Assassin's Creed game, but it's enjoyable nonetheless. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you play as either Alexios or Cassandra, a Spartan mercenary and grandchild of Leonidas. They fight on both sides of the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta, set 50 years after the Battle of Thermopylae. Their journey involves searching for their family, uncovering secrets, and taking down the mysterious cult of Cosmos, targeting their family. The Assassin's Creed series has evolved from modern to ancient times, from the birth of the Hidden Ones in Assassin's Creed Origins, and delving more into Isu lore. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, as Cassandra, we not only confront the cult of Cosmos, but also discovered powerful artifacts of their time, all while serving as the keeper of the staff. Many Assassin's Creed gamers argue that Odyssey doesn't quite fit the franchise's ethos, labeling it as more of an ancient Greek fantasy RPG with the Assassin's Creed title slapped on. However, I see this differently. Throughout the series, every assassin has endured profound tragedy. Altair faced betrayal and witnessed suffering until he embraced his fate in the tomb. Ezio mourned the loss of his family. Connor suffered the destruction of his village and betrayal. Bayek grieved the loss of his son, yet they all persevere, not just for freedom in itself, but for the freedom of choice and thought. The Order and its successors like the Templars believe in controlling humanity, doubting their ability to make the right choices. In contrast, the Assassins uphold the importance of individual agency. As Altair wisely stated, our creed doesn't demand absolute freedom, but rather wisdom in our actions, despite not being a officially inducted into the assassin's order. Cassandra or Alexios embodies the essence of an assassin. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the protagonists witness the harrowing act of their sibling being thrown off a mountain as part of a prophecy, only to face the same fate themselves at the hands of their father. Cassandra! The cult of Cosmos had some involvement as they took interest in this family. They, much like the Templars, seek to impose order through manipulation and control. The cult hunts a Spartan child who survived the terrible fall from Mount Taietos. Their aim is to ignite conflict across Greece, toppling existing powers to establish a new ordered rule. Initially allied with the Order of Ancients and supporting Xerxes' bid for power, the cult eventually devolves into pursuing personal agendas and vendettas. Because of Leonidas' interference with their plans, the cult was determined to end his bloodline before realizing that they could be useful as a potential asset, their weapon. Some some creators have criticized Odyssey for its perceived lack of emotional connection due to limited motion capture. However, the game is rife with tragedy, allowing players to empathize deeply with the character's pain. As Cassandra or Alexios, players experience the anguish of seeing their sibling manipulated by the cult, as well as the sibling's torment of feeling abandonment by their family. Like other assassins in the series, they are thrust into these dire circumstances circumstances, but remain committed to thwarting the cult's malevolent intentions and protecting others from harm. In a way, both Cassandra and Alexios exhibit traits akin to assassins as they meticulously investigate targets, employ logic to track them down, and utilize Icaros, the eagle, to pinpoint their whereabouts. The cultist system in Odyssey offers a compelling way to unveil and hunt down these targets. Although Ubisoft could have explored characters 
character development more effectively. If Cassandra was established as the canon character and Alexios as Demos, their divergent paths could have been explored more deeply. Cassandra's life as a mercenary and Alexios' indoctrination by the cult would have provided rich narrative opportunities. Furthermore, implementing different storylines for each character, coupled with more nuanced dialogue options, could have better fleshed out their individual choices and motivations. In addition to this, the absence of the iconic Hidden Blade in Odyssey diverted from the series' traditional style, leaving some fans unsettled. However, it's worth noting that Odyssey is set before the existence of the Assassin's Brotherhood and Hidden Ones. It did come after 465 BCE, when Darius used the first Hidden Blade to take out the Persian King Xerxes. Nonetheless, it's interesting to consider that the Spear of Leonidas, while a mythical artifact could serve as a precursor to the hidden blade for the protagonist. The protagonist wields this in combat, but primarily uses this for clandestine assassinations, echoing the core principles of Assassin's Creed. Cassandra's connection to the Assassin's Creed storyline runs deeper than initially realized. In a DLC I stumbled upon, she takes a six-month hiatus to decompress, during which she stumbles upon and ultimately destroys the absolute of Eden, which eventually shuts down the power of her spear. Endowed with immortality by the staff, she sets out on a solitary quest to prevent the artifacts from falling into the wrong hands. This journey sets the stage for the plots of Origins and Valhalla, highlighting her pivotal role in shaping the events of the series. One aspect that truly elevated Assassin's Creed Odyssey as an AC game was the introduction of mercenaries. These roaming bosses act acted as relentless pursuers, hunting you down once you attained a certain wanted level by causing havoc or dispatching a lot of people. Each mercenary had a unique name, but they all shared the same fundamental purpose, to track you down and hunt you, posing a formidable challenge. Facing off against a mercenary 25 levels above you may not elicit laughter, but it certainly injects a thrilling level of intensity into the game. It's not easy being an assassin after all. and the presence of these relentless hunters reinforces the arduous nature of the assassin's path, enriching the fantasy of stealth and subterfuge. Picture this, you're meticulously executing a stealthy infiltration into a heavily guarded fortress, only to find yourself constantly on edge as a menacing bounty hunter prowls the vicinity, searching for any sign of your presence. Despite not fitting the traditional image of an assassin, the inclusion of mercenaries encourages players to think and roleplay like one. This feature underscores the pillars of the creed. We work in the dark to serve the light. Engaging in battle with a skilled mercenary is a high-stakes affair. One wrong move could spell your demise with a single devastating blow. One common complaint about certain Assassin's Creed games, including Mirage, was their perceived lack of challenge. By incorporating this dynamic tactic of bounty hunters into the gameplay of more Assassin's Creed games, this would result in a refreshing shift in difficulty, without resorting to simply tanking the enemy's strength. Additionally, the prospect of acquiring higher level mercenary gear, even if it requires waiting 25 levels, adds an enticing layer of reward and progression to the experience. Even if Assassin's Creed Odyssey doesn't entirely match our idea of a traditional Assassin's Creed game, it's hard to deny the sheer enjoyment it offers. Yes, there's a a strong emphasis on leveling, skill progression, and acquiring gear through grinding, but it's all quite manageable with the right build. In comparison to Valhalla, and wielding a powerful bow can turn the tide of battle in your favor, allowing you to dispatch higher level enemies from a safe distance. While Valhalla felt like an endless cycle of plundering and chaos in a world that lacked vibrancy and depth, Malaka 
Players also encounter difficulties in upgrading their weapons due to the scarcity of drachme and resources. Personally, I don't see this as a major issue since we frequently obtain higher level weapons from defeated enemies anyway. Plus, you still save a lot of resources after upgrading weapons every 5 levels. Aside from this, Assassin's Creed Odyssey boasts numerous outstanding features including thrilling naval combat, hidden boss battles, captivating music, and exhilarating abilities like the Spartan Kick, healing, and weapon enhancements with flames. Some critics argue about its historical accuracy, but let's not forget that even Origins had its fantastical elements, like battling Anubis atop a flaming horse. Despite any historical liberties, Odyssey still introduces players to iconic figures like Hippocrates, Socrates, Herodotus, and Plato, adding depth to the immersive world, and in the end, both are just games that we greatly enjoy. Both Odyssey and Origins offer expansive open worlds that are simply awe-inspiring in scale and beauty. However, not everything in Odyssey is perfect. The conquest battles and the modern-day segments with Layla Hassan could be seen as repetitive and lacking depth. And while Layla's role in the modern-day storyline is crucial for the overarching plot, she may not be as compelling a character as Desmond Miles. Although I'm aware of her significance as a former Abstergo employee who's helping the Brotherhood find pieces of Eden, nevertheless, Odyssey remains one of the most memorable entries in the Assassin's Creed series for many players including myself. As for Valhalla, well, let's just say I'd rather let Tartarus take me than give that RPG another chance. So what are your opinions on this game? Do you think Assassin's Creed Odyssey counts as an Assassin's Creed game? If you haven't played this before, would you want to give this a try? Comment your opinions below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to stay updated on your favorite games, including Assassin's Creed. Thank you for watching, and that's all.